Hello, everybody, and welcome to Environmental Science 101. I'm Professor Cedar. I'll be your guide for this. Uh, this is going to be our first set of videos, though not necessarily our first unit. Um, we might look in the background here. So I'll tell you what. These two photos were taken about a year apart. This is a war memorial in India. Um, it was taken recently. I wonder if we could guess what year it was that these two photos were taken. And then the really challenging question, uh, which of these would you rather live in, given the choice? Okay, let's get to our unit objectives. So these are the things that I hope to accomplish as part of these videos. Uh, we're gonna describe what the environment is and then what environmental science is and what disciplines that includes in environmental science. Uh, we're gonna contextualize the history of environmental issues within history, right? The, the big story, one that we're very familiar with. Uh, we're gonna talk about social science concepts in environmental science. And then finally, we were going to do a kind of crash course in ecology and biology and get us ready to move on to evolution for real. Now, as part of this, so those are our objectives, what we're trying to get done. As far as how the videos are organized, we're going to have four sub videos, and I aim to make these about 10 minutes each on average, but it'll vary. So the first one discusses the environment as a topic of scientific study and what that means. Uh, we're going to do a unit on the history of environmental science, or a section rather, a video. Uh, we're going to talk about problems of the environment. And finally, we're going to have an ecology crash course, right? Uh, foundational concepts that we need to be able to get to evolution and understand it. Okay, so to start out with our section one, environment as science. Somebody taking a soil sample here, right? And what we want to make sure of, right? Get a Sharpie and, you know, mark where you are on the bag. Make sure exactly where you are in uh, GIS coordinates. Okay, so uh, what I did for this is I went to Google and I Googled environmental science and I pulled up images and I didn't do anything from there to kind of tailor it. There's no algorithm involved. Uh, but this is what comes up. So we can look through these, right? So some of these are a little bit more academic, but a lot of them are a little bit more on the almost corporate, almost branding, advertising side, which is fine. But more than anything else, we actually kind of want to move away from these images, right? Of a green, forever peaceful earth. Not that that's a bad thing to think about, but we want to put this into specifics, right? Details get really grounded, really specific about it as best we can. So this is a fine place for us to start as far as our conception of environmental science, right? But we got to get specific or else we don't really know what we're talking about. Okay, so what is the environment? Uh, this is a term that comes from biology, right? And it can have a pretty broad meaning in the biological sense. So from the standpoint of uh, an individual, the environment would include essentially everything other than that individual. Now, this is going to come up later, differences between animals that are more social, for example, versus solitary animals, right? Uh, we could talk about the gene's eye view of the environment, but uh, what we want to keep in mind is that there is the environment in the biology sense and how we're going to use the word when we're talking about biology. And then there's the word environment that comes in in the more human sense. And this is kind of inevitable that we have to play in both of these two worlds because our science is interdisciplinary. So human beings are social, right? Um, but, you know, we have to be able to talk about human beings and their environments. And then on the biological side, talk about non-human animals and their environments. And we want to be able to talk about these two worlds without necessarily getting too categorical about it. In other words, we want to work towards a more integrated vision of what this is going to look like. So in the context of this course, from the non-biological side, right, environment is going to be everything physical, living and non-living, which surrounds a group of people. So in this context, the word environment does not include human beings, right? So your neighbor who gets really loud on the phone late at night, that is not an environmental issue. Uh, people going to war, that is not an environmental issue in this context. Yeah, because we were talking about the actions of human beings. Um, on the other hand, we could talk about something like traffic or road noise as being environmental. So sometimes the line is not precisely clear, but keep in mind, right? We are talking about the non-human parts. Um, yeah. Um, I have included the bear here as an example of a solitary animal. From its point of view, right, it is not social. So its environment is literally everything else. Uh, people are social, right? The long story short version is that's why this gets a little bit more complicated because other human beings cannot be treated as though they are a part of the environment like anything else that is physical. 
So I've included this here just to shed light on one way of viewing it through the biological context. Uh, there's a lot of discussion outside the scientific world and inside, really, about this distinction between what is genetic and what is environmental, right? We might, by this point, be really tired of hearing about nature versus nurture, right? But something that not everybody realizes necessarily is that uh, from the point of view of an individual gene, uh, this word, environment, includes all the other genes. And there's also this entire field of epigenetics, right? So the environment can switch genes on and off. So in that context, the distinction between you know, what is genetic, what is environmental, gets... Okay, so we said earlier that environmental science is interdisciplinary. Um, and really, if we were going to be complicated, we need to call it environmental sciences, right, all the time. I say environmental science, but really there are many sciences contained. Um, what exactly is environmental science? The multidisciplinary study of human-caused environmental problems. Now, we could branch this out, but for the purposes of our course, that is what it means. We're looking at problems caused by human beings. Um, it is multidisciplinary because there are many sciences, and these are going to fall into two domains. So we have natural and physical sciences on the one side, so biology, ecology, chemistry, physics, and social sciences and humanities on the other, right? Psychology, law, history, economics. And in order to really do this thing well, we got to blend those two together. One of the things that I like about it the most, right, is you can borrow from all these different areas, makes it interesting. Um, and we can pose the question, so can we recognize these two kind of domains, and can we also see where they blur together a bit with examples? So I have pulled this as a research study looking at all these publications, right? So scientific articles published in the domain of environmental science, and you look at all the keywords of those articles, and you put them together into this thing called a word cloud, and this is what you come up with. So some of these are pretty obviously borrowing from natural sciences, domain, right? So hydrocarbons, that's a chemical term, essentially. Uh, mass is almost definitely in the physical sense, right? So we have the element of copper. We have this thing called a gene. Um, but we also have a number of things here that are from the social sciences side. So you could even pause your video here if you wanted and just look around, see if you can categorize things into each, right? So development, almost certainly in the context of planning and urban development. Cities or cities, right? Uh, waste is one of those terms that could kind of be both. We can talk about waste in the animal sense of waste products, but also waste management. Exposure almost definitely has to do with some sort of pathway. So if you have, you know, a chemical spill, right? Uh, you have a certain pathway and then you have a certain exposure to risk. So it's sort of a blended term. And to be honest, health would be sort of a, a blended term between the two as well. This meeting between biology, right, and health care, right, and taking care of other people. Um, highly recommend it. Pause. See what you can get. Okay. And why is it important? Um, so this is our sort of pyramid of things, right? Different units at different scales. Uh, you got you at the bottom. We got family, friends, and pets, right? Which is larger than you, but contains you. And then even larger than that might be your tribe, however you define that. Uh, the self-defined extended tribe, however you would want to see it, right? You consider like you. We have all of humanity, and then the very top is the ecosystem, right? Kind of upside down pyramid. And the way that this thing sort of works is that in order for the next level up to be strong, the level below has to be able to, to perish, to be able to lose. It has to be fragile, right? It has to be able to, to die. Um, so we, we can construct it that way, right? So in order for the next thing up to be strong, the thing below it has to be in some ways weak, right? In order for the tribe to be strong, the family, friends, and pets might have to sacrifice something and so on all the way up. Well, to be clear, um, this is not something that is put together out of, you know, a moralistic sense. I hate to say it, but it's not out of the kindness of anybody's heart. This is just the way that the world is put together. Yeah. Um, so why is environmental science important? Environmental issues are economic issues. Yeah. These are material issues through and through. Environmental collapse leads to economic collapse. The environment provides the resource base for everything else. Uh, there's a need for collective action problems that cannot be solved by an individual and for public policy, right? And a lot of this has to do with managing negative externalities, a term that we'll look at later on. Um, we've got a lot of uncertainty in the world, and this framing, among others, can help us to make decisions in the light of what we don't know. 
So even if we don't know everything, we can still come to the right conclusion and take the right action in spite of what we know we don't know. Uh, sustainability, right? Um, whether what we, the big we, is doing is something that can sustain into the future without compromising the needs of those future people, people that haven't been born. And then finally, what I call the big three issues. And you don't have to agree with me worldview-wise as far as how I frame it, but in my mind and throughout the course, what I'm going to be pulling back to, right? Uh, big three issues, issues that are going to impact the entire globe and where uh, the worst case scenario doesn't really have a limit on how bad it could be, right? Uh, so war, infectious disease, which would include things like pandemics and bioengineered uh, stuff as well. And then environmental and ecological collapse or issues in general, right? And this would include climate change. So that is going to conclude our first unit. Uh, for the next one, we are going to look at the history of environmental science, starting way back and going up through the present. See you then.